Asia already is a hotbed of entrepreneurship. At the company I work for, Uber, we have hundreds of thousands of driver partners who are entrepreneurs. They're buying cars, they're starting their own fleet, they're becoming millionaires in some cases because they're building large businesses on top of Uber's technology. So we're adding hundreds of thousands of new entrepreneurs onto our platform every month. Uh, and that's an example of entrepreneurship in Asia in its own right. Beyond that, uh, absolutely, we think uh, Asia Pacific is a great place to be an entrepreneur. You've got the great education, certainly plenty of capital, and lots of good ideas and transformative uh, markets to kind of work on. So I, th I think all of the ingredients are here, and I think you'll see more and more entrepreneurship flourish in this region. Our biggest uh, stumbling block, in Singapore at least, is cultural. The ability to take calculated risks um, is a big issue. Uh, and part of that we can handle through education. Part of that is how you think about a support system in terms of an infrastructure. A big issue that still is a challenge in Singapore and the region is the flexibility in jobs. Let's take a scientist who has a discovery or an invention. He or she is going to hesitate to leave the university or a research lab, create a startup, take that risk and with the uncertainty that he or she may not be able to come back to a original position. The more flexible we are with these jobs, the more flexible we are with adapting to people who cycle in and out but who can experiment, that's when we can really achieve success. It almost seems like we're in a little bit of a dichotomy because on the one hand, we've got a generation of Asians who have still subscribe to notions of security and stability, which are not wrong concepts inherently. I mean, everyone wants that, you know, to begin with. But it's just the ability to slowly depart from that uh, and have a slightly more welcoming approach to risk-taking. And going beyond that and saying that it's okay if I fail. I think that that is a huge mental challenge that Asians themselves need to be first of all aware of and secondly try to try to break that, try to challenge that. If we look at the digital economy, especially in Asia, we're now seeing um, major advances and, and changes in the way that people do traditional business. You know, organizations like Braintree have been working with uh, large organizations like Uber and Airbnb globally on helping them expand out of just one singular market. In that, it does also talk to the scalability. And for companies like, you know, companies uh, we see even in, uh, out of Singapore, like we've got Hawker, which are uh, based at the hub here in Singapore, uh, you know, what we're seeing with companies like them, what they're doing is they're providing a next generation solution to a very traditional business. Now, if you know them, they, uh, they essentially uh, allow you through an app, order Hawker food, and bring it to your office or to your home. And I think that's great because what they're doing is digitizing a very traditional, very established business, which is used to being very cash and face-to-face -face operated and giving it a digital presence.